Hi, very often I will show you the best things that came in an antique cupboard and I'm labeling this talk best of the best. So this is all things that came in in the last three weeks or yesterday. So first one is unusual. It's a terrapin set by Gorham. So here's a terrapin tureen. Here are terrapin bowls and here are terrapin forks. The set was created in 1900. I love the turtles on the feet going around the edge. The turtles that are going around the edge of the soup bowls and then the turtles on the top and the shells in the middle of the terrapin forks. So terrapin is quite rare and sets that serve terrapin are extremely rare. I had terrapin once when I was about seven years old at my grandfather's cottage and then I was surprised when I was in China about five years ago. I was checking out the, the Walmart store in Beijing and there was this very fishy smell as you came in the door. And what do I see? This giant pit filled with turtles about this big. And the people are all grabbing them, looking at them, shaking them, wrapping on them like they're, they're a watermelon. And uh, getting the, the turtle they, they want for their turtle soup. So Walmart's selling them. I guess they're not endangered there. And I can't remember how my turtle soup tastes, but I've heard that it's great. So anyway, next item is this really great dresser set. So first of all, let me tell you about a little of my experience on dresser sets. About 20 years ago, a woman called me up and said, my father collected dresser sets. And it ended up that he really collected them. He had about 1,300 dresser sets. And she brought them over to the shop. I looked at them, I gave her a price on them all, and she didn't think it was enough. And so she asked me what I thought of auctions. I said, you know, auctions can be good or they can be not good. But with this kind of quantity, they could probably feature it and it might be a good way to go. Well, she sent it to auction and she got less than I offered her. She was not happy with the price she got. It was probably just too big a collection. Anyway, my favorite one out of all 1,300 was one by Whiting called Pearls. I've never seen another set until yesterday. And then I got this set in. It's gorgeous. It's all hand hammered. It's got all these C sort of motif things. Uh, it's got little pearls in, all over the surface. This is a, the greatest mirror. It's heavy. It's well done. It's museum quality. It's got some other pieces to it, a, a couple of brushes. It's got the shoehorn. Shoehorns usually don't excite me. This thing feels like lead in your hand. It's so heavy. It's really well made, solid silver. This part is usually stainless steel or something like that, but this is a really great dresser set. It's my favorite. So, okay. Then we do a number of shows and I just did a show in Dallas. What do I like about shows? I, I like the selling. I don't particularly like the setting up or the breaking down, but it, that's, that's overrated. It's not as hard as people make out. But my, what I really like about shows is buying. So um, my wife says that I'm impossible as far as buying. If it means going to the mall and picking out clothes, uh -uh, don't want to do it. It's not my thing. But to shop in an antique show, or at Brimfield, out in the dirt. Yeah, I love that. So anyway, this woman, sometimes people bring things in and you can buy that, those things from, from them. Sometimes dealers have things that I like and I'll buy it those. And sometimes people will come in and say, I've got this or I've got that. And a woman came in, she said, I have this set of pierced and chased vine. It's an English silver 
And I said, well, tell me about it. And it was this great big set. So anyway, I think Pierced and Chase Vine is the finest English silver. It started actually about 1830s and it's been made ever since and primarily handmade. Um, it's still made, but it's quite expensive. A knife, for example, sells for about $1,000. When it's gilded, it's even more expensive. Anyway, we managed to buy this woman's set. We've had several of these sets in, in the last few years, but none of them have come close to this set. In English silver, you can tell how old something is. And sometimes, you know, old is definitely better than new. Last week, we got in the oldest piece of English silver we've ever gotten. We got in a mug, and the date stamps showed that it was from the year 1700. Now, that's the kind of silver that's very desirable. This silver was made in the year 1976, so it's not terribly old, but it's the finest quality silver, the finest pattern, the most painstaking pattern made by the English today. And as I say, a service for 14, a little over 200 pieces of flatware. And I will go over the pieces of in the 14 piece place settings. So there's dinner knife, dinner fork, luncheon knife, luncheon fork, salad fork, dessert fork, teaspoon, fish knife, fish fork, place soup, round soup, grapefruit spoon, demi spoon, fruit knife, fruit fork, and steak knife. Now there'll be a test on this after we're done. Okay, the servers are sauce ladle, gravy ladle, soup ladle, serving spoon, five piece carving set, pie server. I love this grape shears, it's really cool. And then there's a couple uh, big salad sets, there's a couple big vegetable sets, and there is a fish set. So that is the flatware in this fabulous set. Okay, so that was the flatware in the, in the collection of Pierced and Chase Vine. Now, I have never had a piece of Chase Pierced Vine hollowware, and that was the exciting thing about the group. She had hollowware. So, there were 14 of these large, super heavy charger plates. I think the, the group of 14 weighs like 400 ounces. And then the goblets are unbelievable. This goblet, this big one, is nine and a half inches tall and weighs 16 ounces. The average little goblet that you get weighs about four ounces. So this is four times as heavy. This middle size goblet is not as big as the other one, but it weighs 12 ounces. It's really beefy. <laughs> this is a, you know, this is a, a massively heavy goblet. And then they've got these, the, the small one. The small one weighs about nine ounces. Again, you know, much heavier than your average goblet. Other things that were I'm just showing you a few things. There are salt and peppers. There were several pair. There was several mustard pots with their little ladle. There were these wine coolers. There's this great big serving tray. And there was a tremendous pair of seven light candelabras. Now the candelabras are at the silversmiths. They still had a lot of wax on them. They desperately need the cleaning. On these, we've polished them since we received them. And the way we did it was we used a toothbrush with a little bit of polish on it and then polished and wiped with a, a you know, a Turkish towel. And then we got another Turkish towel and we cleaned it again. And then actually Dawn soap works very well for the final bit of cleaning. So a little Dawn soap and water will bring back the brightness. So, so anyway, really exciting group. The last item in our tour is my favorite piece ever of Egyptian revival. So it's by George Sharp and it has this big Egyptian here and then it's got this Phoenix bird 
raising out of the fire on the side. And so I love figural things. Most Egyptian re revival is interesting, but it's not off the charts great. And this 1860s piece is off the charts great. Thank you.